Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and this is Florian and we are both application engineers here at Rodeo & Schwartz. Today we're going to show you how to use our SMW200A vector signal generators to test devices that have direction finding capabilities like radar warning receivers, multi-antenna GNSS receivers or the like. For this purpose we have two SMW200A vector signal generators, each with two RF paths so we have in total four RF paths and we have an SMA100B that acts as an LO source whose signal will, will be fed into the IQ modulators of all the RF paths. On the other side, we have a ZNB vector network analyzer that we use to align the RF ports of the SMWs with respect to amplitude, group delay and phase. All this will be controlled using a piece of software that is running on this PC. Apart from the instruments, we also need some accessories that Sebastian will show you. Let me now show you all the accessories we need for this setup. We need power cords for all the instruments, we need Ethernet cables and a switch to remotely control the instruments, we need phase-stable cables for the RF signals and the baseband synchronization, we need BNC cables for the reference coupling and we need uh, some phase stable cables and a power splitter to distribute the LO signal. Let me now show you how to connect everything, so follow me just to the back side of the instruments. As you see we already pre prepared the complete setup. We connected the power cords and the Ethernet to the LAN interface of the SMW. For the SMA these connectors are located on the back side. Next, we connected the advanced trigger output of the master SMW to the advanced clock input of the slave SMW. This connection provides a 50 MHz signal that guarantees synchronization of the basebands. To distribute the LO signal, we connected the RF output of the SMA100B to the input of the power splitter and the outputs of the power splitter to the LO inputs of the master SMW and the slave SMW. This approach allows to scale the number of RF ports if needed. To work on the same reference, we connected the 10 MHz reference output of the SMA, which is located on the back, to the reference input of the master SMW and the reference output of the master SMW to the reference input of the slave SMW. Now we continue on the front side of the setup. Last but not least we connected the RF cables that will eventually provide the signals to the DUT to the RF outputs of the SMWs. To use the same reference frequency on all the instruments we connect the reference output of the slave SMW to the reference input of the ZNB. As you see, we already connected the power cord and the Ethernet cable to the LAN interface. At the front of the ZNB, we connected four phase stable cables. The other end of these cables makes up the reference plane. At this plane, the signals will be aligned in terms of amplitude, group delay and phase. This is also the plane where we later perform the system error correction before we do the actual ports alignment. Now we completed the cabling of our setup, so it's time to switch on the instruments. The next step is to install the software on the laptop. We have already downloaded the installer from our homepage, you can see that here. And just run the installation now. Now the software is installed. Before we continue with the measurement of amplitude, group delay and phase differences between the individual ports, Florian will give you a short summary of what our setup looks like now. We have the signal generators on the one side with RF cables attached that will eventually provide the RF signals to the DUT. On the other side, we have the vector network analyzer, also with RF cables attached. 
at the end of these cables, we will perform a system error correction. There, we will have a reference plane for all the measurements that we will do with the vector network analyzers. Looking at it from the signal generator side, this will be also the plane where the system of the generators will be aligned with respect to amplitude, group delay, and phase. The whole procedure of doing the measurements and gathering the measurement data is controlled by the software that we just installed on the PC. By their nature, phase measurements are sensitive to temperature variations. Therefore, we need to allow all the system to reach the thermal equilibrium. Before we start the actual RF ports alignment process, Sebastian will do a system error correction for the vector network analyzer using a TOSM cal kit. Now we finished our calibration. I show you how to save the cal data in a file in a moment and afterwards we continue with the ports alignment software. To save the file you go to cal, use cal, open the cal manager. Here you see your calibration you just performed. You add it to the pool, double click and give it a meaningful name. Then you just click enter and apply the calibration and that's it. This is what we've done so far. We connected the instruments, we installed the software on the PC, we connected the PC to the same LAN as the instruments, we performed a system error correction on the network analyzer and we connected the RF cables. The next step will be to open the RF ports alignment software. When we open the software, we see this screen. Here we have the choice between loading an existing setup or generating a new setup. This is what we do now. First, we are asked to give our setup a name. Let's call it demo video. After naming it, we get to this overview screen. In the right part, we see a block diagram which depicts what we configured so far. On its left, you see the signal sources. In the middle, there is a block called RF path switching, which I'll explain later on. And on the right, we see a block for the DUT, one for the calibration instrument, and another one for a power sensor. In the column on the very left, we find the menu to configure the setup. Let's start at the top and go through step by step. At first, we define the RF output ports of our setup. By default, we have two undefined ports. When we open the menu and click on Visa, we can select a vector signal generator here. We have four instruments in the list that we added by clicking on Add Visa instrument and entering their IP addresses. We can now check the connection to the SMW and then click on save and select to save the list and select the device. We choose RF port A of this SMW, which shall be the first port in our setup. When we close this drop-down menu, we see that the block diagram in the middle is updated. In the same way, the remaining RF ports are added. The second path is from the same SMW. The only difference this time is we select RF port B. Now, the first SMW is added to the setup. To add further ports, we click on Add RF ports and add RF ports 3 and 4 in the same way. Next, we go to the LO ref configuration menu. In our setup, we are using the SMA100B as external LO source. By clicking on Visa, we can again select the signal generator. The LO signal is fed into a power splitter and distributed to both SMWs. So we are not using a daisy chain, but a star distribution. As the LO signal, 
The reference signal is also from an external source, in our case, the SMA100B. Now, the signal generator setup is complete, so we come to the RF path switching. The RF path switching describes how the switching between the calibration instrument and the DUT is done. For the alignment process, the signal generators are connected to a VNA. For testing the DUT, the setup is connected to the real DUT. The path switching from VNA to DUT can be done either manually or automatically with a switch matrix, like the RNS OSP. If you use an OSP, you have to select it in the same way as the signal generators and load a config file that describes the connections to the switching matrix. In our setup, we don't have an OSP, so we set the switching mode to manual. Now, we come to the right side of our block diagram. We have to select the measurement instrument. Therefore, we use our set and B. After selecting the device, the port alignment software automatically displays the number of input ports. We don't have direct receiver access on this instrument. The calibration mode we use is TOSM. And here, we have to provide the name of the calibration file that we created before, where we did the system error correction. We could now add a power meter to perform an absolute amplitude measurement. This is one possible method. Another option is to use the smart recall feature in the set B which combines system error correction and power calibration. We are omitting the step here. As a consequence, the absolute level at the reference plane is off due to the attenuation of the cable. However, the relative power level between the individual paths is correct. The last step is to define the frequency range, modulation bandwidth and level range for that the ports shall be aligned. We do the alignment from 9 to 11 gigahertz with a step size of 500 megahertz for a bandwidth of 500 megahertz. The level range is starting at minus 10 dBm going to 0 dBm with a step size of 5 dB. Let's now have a look at the block diagram. On the left we have our signal sources. In the middle we have our manual RF path switching and on the right we have the set and B as measurement device and a depiction of the DUT. When we now click on calibrate, the changes in the setup are saved and the alignment procedure starts. The software performs measurements of amplitude, delay and phase offsets for all frequencies and levels. The results are stored in the SMWs. After the alignment is finished, a pop-up informs you that now a quick check is performed. During the quick check, the alignment data is checked and the residual error in terms of amplitude, delay and phase offset is measured. When the quick check is finished, the remaining error is displayed for each port and each frequency as plot of magnitude, phase and delay error over level. Now we have a four channel setup with user-definable amplitude, group delay and phase relations at the reference plane where we can connect our DUT. All the alignment data is stored on the SMWs so that the whole setup can be operated without using a PC. You can use the setup to test radar warning receivers with radar signals, multi-antenna GNSS receivers with GNSS signals or any other DUT requiring user-definable amplitude, group delay and phase differences at the reference plane. That's it. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.